calling the meeting to order. Can I please have attendance and roll call? Supervisor Holdridge. Here. Council Member Artisana. Here. Council Member Becker. Here. Council Member Courtney. Here. Council Member Dysinger. Here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First, we have a public hearing on introductory law number two, code enforcement program. Do I hear a motion to uh, open the public hearing? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So, unanimous vote. The public hearing is now open. Are there any comments online, Michelle? Someone on the list here. Does anybody in the public here today want to speak on the code enforcement program? Seeing none, um, was would you just like to let give a brief overview of what it is, basically? Certainly. So um, the uniform code, which includes the fire code, property maintenance code, uh, building code, um, is put out by New York State. Um, and implemented through uh, Chapter uh, 50 of the Town of Chester Code. Uh, there were recent amendments to the state provisions which required amendments um, to our code. Our code uh, reflects the model uh, law as put out by New York State uh, Department of State. It's been reviewed by your engineering team, like Intelli. It's also been reviewed by the, the um, building inspector, and they've provided, they've provided additional comments. Uh, there was one provision that was carried over from the old chapter uh, 50 regarding uh, filling perm permits related to filling, and that's carried over. Any comments from the public or online? Happy. Anything from uh, up here on, on the council? I just think it's great that we're uh, getting things updated and uh, back into compliance. Yeah. And the I'm, last, yeah. Larry, go ahead. Yeah, I'm fully supportive of you know using you know the new up to date uh, state code. That's great. And Liz, if you could just in layman's terms, what how is this? If you just can explain beneficial to the town. Um, this is effectively how um, the, the your building department enforces that code. Um, it provides for the inspections um, when things need to be inspected. Uh, it also provides for um, for if there's violations, it, it authorizes the building inspector to do things like stop work orders, um, and fully sets that sets that in, in, in much greater detail. It also provides for operating permits for um, those businesses they can carry on certain types of activity um, that may be more hazardous. That you know, uh, companies that may uh, can store uh, you know flammable chemicals or things like that. Um, they would be subject to operating permits as, as well. So it makes much more clear. Again, it's to bring us in line with um, the current New York State uh, Uniform Code uh, as, as required by state law. Good. Less Wild West building, I guess. Um, all right. Uh, with that being said, is there a motion to close the public hearing? Motion. Is there a second? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah, do we think we're ready for that? I have a resolution ready to go. Very good. Um, whereas the town of Chester is responsible for administering and enforcing the New York State Uniform Fire Prevention and Building Code, the Uniform Code, and the State Energy Conservation Construction Code, the Energy Code within its jurisdictions, and whereas 19 NYCRR Part uh, 1203 contains the minimum standards established by the Department of State pursuant to Executive Law Section 381, Subsection 1. Part 1203 requires each local government and administ that administers and enforces the Uniform Code and Energy Code to establish a code enforcement program and to include certain features within that program. The Uniform Code and Energy Code were amended um, and became effective on May 12, 2020. 
based on the new versions of the Uniform Code and Energy Code, corresponding changes are necessary um, to 19 NYCRR Part uh, 1000, uh, excuse me, 12, 1203 to coordinate these rules and regulations for the administration and enforcement of the Uniform Code and Energy Code. Whereas these amendments necessitate the Town of Chester to revise and update Chapter 50 of the Town of Chester Code as it relates to the administration of the Uniform Code and Energy Code. Uh, whereas introductory local law two of 2024, a local law establishing local government code enforcement program was duly introduced before the town board on March 13th, 2024. And whereas the town board determined that the proposed action was a type two action for purposes of seeker and that no further environmental review is required. Whereas a duly noticed public hearing was held on April 10th, 2024. Now therefore be it resolved that the town board hereby adopts introductory local law two of 2024 as local law four of 2024, and be it further resolved that the town clerk shall cause the same to be filed with the New York State Department of State. All right, uh, do I hear a motion? A motion, uh, a second. And this is effective immediately? Effective upon filing. Effective upon filing. Um, roll call vote, please. Supervisor Holdridge? Aye. Council Member Artisana? Aye. Council Member Becker? Aye. Council Member Courtney? Aye. Council Member Dysinger? Aye. It's a unanimous vote. The, vault, the local law passes. Thank you, Liz. <clears throat> we have a second public hearing today on the Conservation Advisory Council, uh, introductory local law number three. This is a follow up to the resolution we passed a couple months ago. Um, our, we have one person on the list so far, Tracy Shu. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, do I hear a motion to open the public hearing? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Please step right up. Is this on? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Where it is? Okay. Um, okay. Well, I hope you don't mind. I just wanted to first say a few words of appreciation and support for the formation of the Conservation Advisory Council. I'll refer to it as the CAC. I was out of the country and I missed when you made that resolution. Um, so I couldn't say it then, so I wanted to say it now. Thank you. Um, this is something that is close to my heart. Those that know me, I have dedicated the last 20 years with the Nonprofit Preservation Collective. And our main goal is to encourage citizen involvement in town planning with nature in mind. Preserving our natural environment includes protecting our drinking water sources, critical habitat, floodplains. These are of vital importance to the health, welfare, and economic well-being in our community for present and future residents. Um, but of course, steps need to take place in local government to make these goals happen. And there is no time like the present. You have a building moratorium in place, a comprehensive plan update in progress, town code improvements in the works, and now forming the CAC. This means you have created a collaborative team of public officials and residents working together for the betterment of our community's future. And I am um, just pleased to see this cooperation and I'm happy to volunteer my time. Um, as for the local law you've proposed, I am not a lawyer on the details, but it follows the guidelines of the New York State General Municipal Law. It outlines the roles and responsibilities of the council, which functions as an advisory capacity towards the goals set forth by the town board. And I think this is really important to adopt so that everyone is on the same page. Of course, some of the tasks are extensive and won't happen overnight or all at once. This is a work in progress and we're not in it alone. There are a lot of resources out there. There are over 200 official CACs in, in, established in the New York State. And this includes active councils in our neighboring municipalities. Together, we can all um, you know, work together for protecting open space and critical resources. So collectively, we can make a positive impact through education and community outreach. So I'll end with thanking you again for recognizing the value of a CAC in the town of Chester and thank those that are willing to work together on conservation. I look forward to a meeting with more willing community leaders and other civic organizations on these common goals so that we can have an ongoing joint efforts and in sharing information, planning perspectives, and encouraging us all to be better stewards of the land. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Are there any other comments about the uh, local law? How about online? Nothing. Nothing. Uh, uh, so, Supervisor, I do just want to recognize that we um, received a comment uh, via email, uh, which I'll make sure uh, Linda has as part of her comment on the public law written comment. Um, they have, uh, this is from Grayson. Um, I'm sorry, Les. Uh, Squire Sussman. Thank you. 
um, the one the one request um, he asked uh, that was asked of the board was um, to add the language um, under their under the charge of the uh, CAC was to evaluate and make recommendations as to climate change mitigation and climate change adaptation. Um, I can make those changes. I have a red line prepared. Uh, if if the board wishes to make those changes, uh, what I would recommend is that um, I circulate this uh, via email this evening and we put it on the agenda for adoption at our next meeting so that it's on your desks in final form. Um, uh, or you, the other alternative is to adopt it in its current iteration uh, this evening. Um, I, leave that I would board. say adopt in the current and we could always amend possibly later on. Would it, would it require a whole other public hearing for the small addition? That's a bus, that's a business decision for the board whether you want that that language. Yes, if you were to amend the law, um, that you do have broad categories under um, what's currently listed as subsection L, carry out such other duties as may be assigned from time to time by resolution of the town board that are consistent with the objectives of this chapter. So there is broad room to delegate something to the CAC um, under that broad language. It's up to you. Uh, I'm just relaying the the recommendation uh, from the soon to be formal chair chairperson. Mm -hmm. What do we all think? Is it? I vote as is. Vote as is, and we'll hold another public hearing for the small addition. No, how does that small addition affect? It's just more specifically more about outlining more specific. their duties. More specific to what's already in there. Yeah, correct. There's nothing, nothing's being added to whatever. No, it's, no, no. it's, it's, it's just really basically just a clarification. Out. Okay. Yeah. It, it, and it's, I think the easiest approach, if you wish to make the change, let's circulate it in final form and you can take action on it. We'll close the public hearing tonight. Yep. We've received the comments. We'll circulate it up amongst the board for final action at our next meeting. Agreed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So we will take action on but the law. But you can close the public yes. hearing yep. tonight. Yep. We won't take action at this time. We'll, we'll vote this in at the next meeting. Um, is there any other, are there any other comments? All right. Uh, is there a motion to close the public hearing? Motion. Is there a second? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Public hearing is closed. All right. We are for the minutes of uh, March 13th and March 27th, the town board meetings from that month. Uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimously approved. Okay, now we're up to reports. <clears throat> All right, so a few housekeeping items from me just to um, clear some things up. Uh, from, from last time, and I did include this in my recap meeting of uh, the last meeting. So uh, it was asked by a couple, well, really just uh, one or two uh, members of the community about the ethics uh, situation. So right now we have an open uh, seat on the ethics board for the independent um, seat, meaning neither Republican nor Democrat, be any other registered party um, or, or non-party. <clears throat> and then also a uh, Democratic uh, seat. Uh, Deputy Supervisor uh, Becker formally held that seat, but after review, well, after further review of the ethics code, um, it was discovered that there was a um, there was a discrepancy in terms of who could be on the board. In one part of the code, it said uh, one thing, and on another part of the code, it said the other. Um, but because there is a part of the code that does say a sitting board member can't be on a sitting town board member, that is, can't be on the ethics board, uh, Supervisor Becker was happy to resign uh, from the committee to make sure that we're in compliance with our code. So it was as innocent as that. Um, and that is that. And then the other uh, situation, it was my mistake. <clears throat> uh, Michael Mallon was appointed to the uh, planning board seats with a vote of five to zero, meaning everyone up here voted for 
uh, Mr. Mallon to be on the uh, planning board. Michael is a retired teacher of environmental science, 34 year Chester resident, and was, form, uh, was a former president of the Chester School Board. I failed to remember to abstain in this vote. I was supposed to, and I, and I didn't. I voted in favor of um, appointing him. I made a mistake um, in doing so because he, he did donate $200 to my campaign uh, in which I near, which, in which I raised uh, nearly twenty thousand dollars for in total. Uh, regardless, it is the it is an appearance of impropriety, and I apologize for that. Uh, to make it crystal clear, his donation did not have uh, any effect on my decision uh, that I made or any of the other board members made uh, when voting for Mr. Mallon five to zero. Uh, I don't personally know Michael uh, more than any other person that uh, point, uh, that applied for the planning board seat, um, and there were three other candidates. Uh, there was a rigorous process for choosing uh, Mr. Mallon. Uh, the planning board interviewed all candidates and chose a final two who they thought would be good picks. Uh, the town board then interviewed and chose from those two candidates. Uh, Mr. Mallon has a unique background and plans to stay in Chester for the rest of his life uh, he is the best choice for the position and would have been appointed whether or not I abstained at all. Uh, it would have been a four to zero one decision if I abstained, which I was, again, I was supposed to, uh, but I just wanted to apologize to the public for that mistake on my behalf. All right, moving on. There is a coolest recycling event happening here at on April 20th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, in the uh, parking lot right outside Town Hall. Uh, basically, uh, the Conservation Advisory Council, uh, who we just heard from and about, uh, are collecting and properly recycling small appliances with refrigerants. Uh, the town of Chester uh, is a first time participant in Sustainable War Warwick's coolest recycling drive of 2024. Chester, New York area residents are invited to bring small appliances with refrigerants so they can be collected and properly recycled. Some examples are air conditioners, dehumidifiers, water coolers, mini fridges, and other small appliances with refrigerants. Um, and the uh, flyer of which is, should be on the town board, uh, on the town uh, website, and it's been posted around town. Uh, Little League opening day is also uh, April 20th. I believe it starts at 1130 and runs until 2. Am I mistaken? Does anybody else know? No. Well, it starts at 1130. So you got that. 1130 games starting at 1. There you go. <clears throat> um, yep, so that'll be at Carpenter Park, as always. Um, I know that there is a Bruderhof event happening, but I can't remember what it was. Tom, do you know? It's also it's also on the April twentieth. Yes. Um, it's at three five nine Gibson Hill Road, obviously at the Vale Vale Community, um, from two to five p.m. So you can uh, recycle some refrigerants in the morning, uh, head over to see some baseball, and then end your day at the Vale Vale Community. Uh, and this is a open house. Uh, there will be food, fellowship, and activities for kids, horse cart rides, and face painting. Um, so that is that. Thank you, Linda. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> there is a shred event happening. Um, the town clerk's ninth annual shred event, um, July 12th, 2024, uh, from 10 a.m. to noon. Um, it's exactly what it sounds like. You can go there to shred a documentation that you feel that needs to be shred. Um, do you have anything else to add on that? No. Okay. Now we're on to the police report. I have one more uh, event that's coming up too, if you sure. if you allow me. Uh, the Chester Cemetery Association is having its 11th annual Memorial Day weekend uh, sponsor a flag fundraiser. Uh, we'll have uh, information on that event posted on the town website. It's also on the uh, Village of Chester, and I think the Chronicle way it may be putting that on their uh, website also for anybody that'd like to uh, sponsor a flag. It's five dollars, and there's information on this flyer in reference to who to contact. 
I'll leave that with Linda. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Uh, the animal control report, uh, four calls uh, were for loose, lost, and found dogs. One call was for a bear sighting. One call was a for a barking dog. One was for a person hit by, or no, a person bit by a dog. One was for an injured possum, an injured cat, a sick raccoon, and was for a goat and two geese walking in the roadway. That was interesting. Um, all right. We have. All right. Uh, criminal activity. There were 22 arrests uh, during the month of March. Um, there were. Um, I won't go into the details there. Uh, for non-criminal activity, there were 30 residential, commercial, and automatic fire alarms, 23 medical calls, 16 reports of suspicious persons, uh, vehicles, and activities, one, uh, one motor vehicle crash, four motor vehicle crashes without injuries. The one was with an injury. Uh, five crashes involving deer. Um, Community policing. Uh, during the month, uh, police officers assisted the community in many ways. Uh, three house security checks and 1,073 1, business security checks. Uh, Sergeant Dugan and officers Bird, Weinstein, Stack, and Narain continued to complete child passenger safety seat checks and installations when needed. Uh, there were two seat checks completed in March. Officers were assigned to a special event at the Chester Academy on March 4th. Chief Dollinger attended the Sugarloaf Community Foundation meeting in Romer's Alley on March 21st. Following a brief presentation and QA Q and A session was had with the members in attendance. I can personally vouch for that. It was a good time. Um, the PBA held their annual community Easter egg hunt in the Chester Commons Park on March 30th. Hundreds of community members attended with the free event. I can't vouch for that, but I heard it was a good time. Uh, we continue to assign school resource officers to the Chester Academy and Chester Elementary School during each day. Uh, school day, Officers Perez, DeLuca, and Donato are fulfilling this assignment. Um, training, uh, there was a training session on March 12th. Uh, the topic was the annual TASER research, uh, recertification training. Chief Dollinger attended Mid-Hudson Association of Ch uh, Chiefs of Police. Wow of police training in Poughkeepsie on March 14th. I need a drink of water. Uh, the executive director of, I'm not even going to, NYSACOP, NYSACOP, uh, discussed upcoming legislation, a, represent a representative uh, from the DCJS Law Enforcement Strategic Assistance Unit also made a presentation. Officer Calderon assisted in an instructor at the basic SWAT school in Goshen on March 25th and 26th and at a active shooter training conducted on West Point on March 27th and 28th. Very happy to hear that we get a lot of training here in the town of Chester. Some miscellaneous stuff happened and we will move on. The historian, town historian. Uh, in addition to continuing routine activities of this office, I can report that the town's insurance administrator, Tokyo Marine HCC, has received payment from the driver's insurance company for the property damage claim against the car that destroyed um, the Welcome to Chester historic marker on Route 17M at the Chester Goshen border on December 22nd, 2023, and will issue payment to the town which I did also receive a um, copy of. So I'm very happy we were able to get that. So the taxpayers do not have to pay nearly as much for that. The uh, Sugarloaf uh, Fire Engine Blood Drive is happening on April 11th from 1 to 7 p.m. Um, there's an urgent call to donate blood right now. Blood supplies are dangerously low Don donating blood is simple and safe your donation will help give life to millions of americans each year who need blood transfer transfusions uh during surgery after an accident and because of a disease that requires a blood component come and reserve your spot to donate today 
barring a family obligation, I will be there myself and will most likely pass out like I usually do. <laughs> so have pretzels ready for me, whoever's there. Um, all right, Slack report. All right, Warwick Performing Arts uh, completed a very successful Mary Poppins weekend of shows. All patrons had a great time and were delighted when Mary Poppins actually fl uh, flew across the stage during the performances. Melvin Seals from the Jerry uh, Garcia Band at the uh, Performing Arts Center Friday at um, on April 12th. Oh, that's this coming Friday. Town of Chester PBA Award Ceremony is Saturday, April 13th at 10 a.m. in the Pavilion. Uh, Damage, Inc., a Metallica tribute uh at the performing arts center on saturday the 13th which is a couple days from now and led lights to enhance the pavil pavilion stage were budgeted for and have been ordered which should be a nice upgrade to our pavilion all right got <clears throat> parks and rec uh, from Kristen, a routine daily operations, which included answering calls, ordering supplies, filing, invoicing, work shows, and managed volunteer staff at the Performing Arts Center. Attended several meetings concerning the parks of for improvements and uh, for 2024 season. I can vouch for that. I was there. Internal uh, staff meetings, meetings with the Little League and Chester Stock Soccer Club, as well as the town engineer. Processed several private party park permits. Uh, coming up for Saturday, April 20th, the Little League opening day. All welcome uh, begins at 11, starts, uh, games start at 1. The Kiwanis Club will have their annual 5K uh, run slash walk on the 25th of May at Carpenter Community Park. Uh, working with a playground company and town engineers to get quotes for Carpenter Park, uh, Park Playground, a dispatch of maintenance, all maintenance requests, ordered part of uh, Portage on for Pulverit. Uh, field and coordinating schedules for all parks with maintenance staff, which is a beast of a thing. Right. Highway. <clears throat> Assisting the water department in Walton Lake doing valve upgrades, roadside brush cleanup is concluding, removing snow removal equipment. Uh, from trucks as well as we believe the snow season is over, monitoring drainage and flooding issues with the town. Uh, the secondary lighter lift is installed in operational routine maintenance of vehicles and equipment. That was the highway. Uh, senior center programs continue to run smoothly and well attended. Montreal, uh, Quebec trip full payments are coming in accordingly. Uh, new holiday trip to Lancaster going out on Friday, uh, limited to, to the first 45 people with a paid uh, deposit. If the trip is full, we will schedule another one. Uh, working on scheduling some day trips as well as senior and children events. Uh, accounting. The accounting department continues to make progress. Uh, bank reconciliations have been completed through December 31st and journal entries are to be worked on. The controller is working with Edmonds, our accounting system provider on remapping the accounting system and ensuring the town is utilizing the system to its fullest ability. There are still a lot to catch up on going back to 2022. The town has fully implemented its new anti-fraud banking system with success. All right, building department. <clears throat> Uh, building department uh, building permits issued from March 1st, 2024 to March 31st, 2024 is 2020 uh, is 22. Total certificates of compliances and certificates of occupancies are 149. Um, the certificates of compliance and occupancies compliance number is complete completed is huge. This is a result of letters slash violations and summons and teamwork. We're moving along. That is from Melissa and John. And then the addition to that is the permits or um, update. <clears throat> this is the process for expired permit notification. 
a letter is sent to the homeowner if there's no response in 30 days in order in order to remedy violation uh sent certified mail return receipts and regular mail with a date that it must be remedied by uh if there's no response to that within 30 days there's a summons to court uh sent certified mail return receipt and regular mail some owners are replying to the first letter some more reply to the order to remedy violation uh and most will reply once the summons is received on the report below some permits have been closed out and some have been renewed with a six month expiration expired permit update expired between january 1st 2020 and december 31st 2021 presently 10 expired down from 13 previously uh from january 1st 2022 to december 31st 2022 uh, presently 74 expired permits down from 125. And then finally from January 1st, 2023 to December 31st, uh, 2023, presently 129 expired down from 238. Continue to be vigilant in following up on next steps, answering phones and renewing permits. I again want to thank John, Melissa and Michelle for all that they're doing down there. They are really cleaning up the mess. So thank you. Finally, um, water department. Um, the water department processed and distributed 6,691,901 gallons of water for the month of March. The district's daily average range from 196 gallons to 81,000 gallons. The monthly breakdown is below that can be found online um, in the minutes of the meeting. Um, distribution, distribution, uh, distribution sampling by us as well as random samplings from Orange County DOH showed adequate disinfection levels and tested negative for any signs of bacteria. Uh, monthly DOH 360 forms and test results for February were submitted on March 1st, 2024. Uh, some other normal things went on. Maintenance, other business. Walton Lake Estates was quiet with routine operations and maintenance. On March 1st, we updated a three inch pipe in the plant due to leaking in old pipes and repainted all the pipes in the plant. Uh, March 14th, there was a power surge at the plant. Code Electric came out to help figure out the issue. The plant only ran off of the generator until we figured out the problem generator ran for 24 hours due to this district loss pressure a couple times um the 15th tam cam in to help tam tam, tam came in tam tam came oh he mm -hmm. forgotten he uh solved the problem and we determined if we if it it was a faulty timing sensor temporary fix of a jumper wire until new part came in so we ran, so we run off normal power and not generator. Uh, 319 at 137 Lake region, we had a low pressure issue and determined there was a leak at the saddle of the main. Uh, 320, we did a single valve job in Oak and Tulip, ended up not having right parts, had a cap off main and backfill until we get the correct parts. Uh, 321, we replaced the temporary fix to put in a new valve at open tulip with help from highway with the dig lots of problems over in walton lake states i think it's important to read all that out so people understand just what our water department is dealing with and what they're trying to do to fix the issues sugarloaf was quiet with normal operations and maintenance 311 we lost power at plant and ran the tow behind the generator for a few hours there surrey meadows was mostly quiet with normal operation maintenance 3A at Sur 5 Surrey Road, we dug up and located shut off to the house and determined there was no leak with help of the highway. Lake Hill Farms and Fieldcrest were all quiet. The revenue and consumption report from Ralton Lake, uh, revenue was 47,000, consumption was around 5 million gallons. Surrey Meadows consumption, our revenue was 37, 38,000. Consumption was about 6 million gallons. Lake Hill Farms was 76,000. Revenue, 13 million consumption. Uh, Sugarloaf was 28,000 in revenue, 5 million in consumption. Fieldcrest was 
around um, 10,000 in revenue, 966,000 in consumption. All right. And finally, the tax receiver. Uh, we have a 92% collected um, in terms of townwide for the tax receiver. And this comes out to $18,414,376.31. That is that. Is that the total with the uh, other percentage off? Uh, could not tell you. Okay. My, I'll give you this. Maybe I'll get a more in-depth review from the tax receiver next time. All right. Are there any other reports at this time? Just the mortgage receipts. <clears throat> mortgage tax receipts, uh, taxes collected was $91,726 in the town of Chester. Um, I believe that's it for reports. Are there any of your questions on any of the reports that I just read? Uh, no, no. Anything online, Michelle, so far for the reports? No, not related to reports. Okay. All right. Uh, moving on. Town board reports. Yeah, why not? Um, motion to move uh, the Kiwanis Town cleanup to the top of the agenda. I'll make the motion. Is I'll there a second? second? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Tom, if you want to give a quick thing, and we'll go right back to public comment right after. Do you want to do town reports also? Board reports. Oh, yes. Sorry, right. I asked for more reports. <laughs> I'll get you guys right after. Well, thank, thank you, sir, for allowing me to appear tonight. Uh, the clean update that we have this year the, uh, is May 11th, start 9 o'clock sharp, finish at 11.30 with lunch at 11.30 to 12, and you're home at 12 noon. So I'm going to ask Linda, as always, to get me the four dumpsters, and I'll coordinate that with you during the week. Uh, I just have to coordinate with Walton Engine Hose. I showed Danny the date, and I'll speak to the uh, the Department of Public Works who always helps us. And all you guys are always there, so I have your vest underrated already. <laughs> so I'll see everybody then, all right? See you then. Uh, we do have a rain date, and God forbid that we need it, but it is May 18th as a rainy date, if the record could have that. And there is lunch once again. And we're meeting in the Wendy's parking lot as usual? Yes, Wendy's parking lot. That's where it's going to start, and then a little conclude at Tina's and the ice cream place. It's going to conclude at Tina's oh, and okay. Chester ice cream. Yes. It's good to know. So Great. that way, everybody has a slice of pizza and some ice cream. Okay. Very good. Great. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a wonderful night. You too. Thank, Thank you, Tommy. Tommy. Happy birthday, by the way, Tommy. Oh, yeah. happy birthday. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Forty's getting. <laughs> Motion to sing happy birthday. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Have a nice day. All right, town reports, and then we'll go to public comment. Uh, we'll start, Tony. Yeah, um, I've been questioning uh, having some ID cards made up by the town town employees for the town employees. Uh, example is if somebody comes to my house, to check my water or some kind of problem. I don't know who it is, and it's uh, very vague at this. point. Gotcha. It is definitely something we should look into. Along with, I'm just remembering that, uh, what, what was over there at the Sugar Loaf, the pump house? It's a pump house, yeah. There was a crop park there, as a matter of fact, when I left. I think just, the village had them done. I think the uh, Sheriff's Department actually helped yeah, so. to do that sure. in the past for the village. The ID cards? Yeah, they did an ID card for the village employees, for water and highway. All right. Good idea. Sheriff's Department. Bob? Um, just really just a lot of meetings. I mean, today we met with the Reese Group um, coming up with uh, creative ways how we could reduce the insurance cost. Um, I was at the PAC Monday with Tom um, going over the uh, 
the plans we're going to have to bring uh, the pack up to up to date with the, the water that goes into it. Um, and then uh, I also I followed up today with the fire uh, the Sullivan fire suppression was there. So I followed up after Tom had left there just to get an update from Walt. And then on Saturday, I went out with the comprehensive plan committee. We went on a field trip looking at open space and you know, so the committee had a better understanding of what was available in the town for open space. And, you know, so when, as we're going through the process, they have an idea now, they see a name, they can put put the property to the, what, you know, to what the name of it is. Wonderful. And that's really it. All right. Um, for me, I uh, met with the Conservation Advisory Council on the 28th, um, multiple meetings throughout the week with uh, our engineer team and our attorneys for various different reasons. I uh, had a meeting about the fiber optic project in uh, town hall. I had a meeting. I toured the town with uh, PERMA um, in terms of worker, workers' comp and all that. Um, I had a meeting with Parks and Rec last week. Um, had a town wide meeting. I'm continuing the town wide meetings with our departments to make sure the full town is on the same page and, and can help each other out in their missions. Um, had a what's it called? Let's see. Had a meeting with T-Mobile to talk about possible uh, phone system replacement. Um, had a meeting about Carpenter and Sugarloaf and the Chester Commons for various grant opportunities. Um, finally, uh, had another meeting about that on Monday with uh, our county legislator, Glenn Ellers. And then today uh, we had a, like uh, Councilman Courtney said, a safety committee meeting with the Reese group to try to make sure we're in compliance the way we need to be. And hopefully we'll bring down our insurance uh, costs long-term. Uh, Tom? Yep, I uh, received a price of uh, $7,500 from John Riley for the highway department to replace the culvert pipe under the roadway leading to the well on town owned property by the Chester Academy. Uh, this may be a item we uh, use some ARPA funds for possibly because it's really not budgeted for it, but something we'll need to get done in the future. Uh, at the Sugarloaf Performing Arts Center, uh, we are working to bring the water system into compliance with the requirements of the New York State Part 5 Sanitary Code for water system requirements. I've been in touch with the Orange County Health Department our engineer and our water department to bring uh, the system into compliance. Uh, we are currently working to finalize plans to bring water from the Sugarloaf Water District into the building to eliminate parts of the existing domestic and fire system. Uh, again, Bob had mentioned the Sullivan sprinkler system uh, was did uh, inspection of the fire system and we will review that report generated as soon as it is received and ensure that safety of the facility you know, in terms of safety of the facility and make any updates as needed. Uh, I was also waiting on a price for a wet tap for the project of uh, installing water to that site. And they came in with a price of about $6,000. I will vote. I think I forwarded it over to the board. That's something we could do in the near future if we uh, have funds to do that, to do that. I also attended a village, a village of Chester board meeting on Monday. Uh, this is just to keep a line of communication open with the village board between us and them so we can keep uh, you know, any projects between us going. Uh, that's it. Thank you. Very good. Larry? Uh, yes. Uh, as you know, I drafted a, uh, a local law for the filling of land, and I had provided to all the board members, town board members, as well as the planning board, uh, the uh, uh, our building inspector also has a copy of that. Um, it was discussed uh, briefly at uh, previous, uh, this last uh, planning board session, but I have not gotten any feedback from any of the you know, board members. So if you could uh, at some point find some time and provide me with your feedback on that so we can move forward with that. Uh, last uh, our work session, uh, we had discussed the noise ordinance recommendations that I had submitted a couple of years ago. Um, <clears throat> the, you guys had requested uh, me to provide noise ordinance from other towns. I had obtained the ones from uh, Beacon, New Windsor, and Monroe, and then forwarded it to you. So at some point, uh, I think we have a, a line item uh, here at our, at our 
agenda tonight to discuss it, but I followed through with that. I also met with uh, Dan uh, tonight. Got him, I got some really valuable input from Dan, his perspective on it. Um, so, you know, it probably warrants a couple of changes on that. Not minor, but uh, minor, but not nothing major. So we need to proceed on that as well. <clears throat> um, uh, as far as a new item is concerned, uh, in 2010, an amendment to the state law, lo state town law 276-7.C, uh, not only removed the limit of no more than two additional extensions of 90 days, but also set forth no limitation on the number of extensions so long as if on the planning board's opinion that such extension is warranted by particular circumstances. <clears throat> this section reads as follows. Duration of a conditional approval on final plat. Conditional approval of the final plat shall expire within 180 days after the resolution granting such approval unless all requirements stated in such resolution have been certified as completed. Planning board may extend for periods of 90 days each, the time in which a conditionally approved plat must be submitted for signature if, in the planning board's opinion, such extension is warranted by the particular circumstances. Uh, first, particular circumstances is pretty vague. Uh, secondly, by giving unlimited extensions, I, I believe um, is not in the best interest of the town. So. Uh, what I'm going to recommend is that uh, the town board pass a local law at some point to reinstate the limit of no more than two additional 90-day site plans extensions uh, and notifying the town planning board requirement for enforcement. So that's something you know, I want to pursue and you know, try to close up, a, uh, I think, an exposure that the town has. Thank you, Larry. All right, that's all I have. I just had one more thing, Brandon, also. Sure. We received uh, some correspondence from the uh, town of Blooming Grove in, re in response to a public hearing going to be held at their town hall in regards to the uh, warehouse that's being proposed on Craigville Road. Uh, I think maybe a few board members may want to go to that because if this uh, plan goes through, uh, a lot of the traffic from this site will more than likely come through either the town of Monroe or the town of Chester from this project because until that interchange is done with future 86, you know, they have no way of getting back on a highway. They can get off there, but they can not get back on. So it's going to force all the road traffic and, you know, employee traffic through our uh, municipality. So it's a great concern for us. And that, uh, Can you restate the, the date for that? That date is Tuesday, April 16th, 2024 at 7.01 p.m. Yeah, the other consideration is that on Craigville Road there, you had to have that, that one lane underpass going over, you know, a Heritage Trail, which, you know, there are a lot of trucks that may not be able to go through that. So it's going to force, um, if they go down south, they're going to probably turn on to either Great Court Road or something and have significant traffic there. So this could have huge impact on the traffic within Chester. I think uh, the fact that they're going to hit 17M, the complications they'll hit in Monroe to try to get back on 17 with the roads and the lights, I think it'll be a simpler thing for them to come back into Chester. Uh, I know there's the ramp there. Hmm to get on the highway, but they may come all the way into Chester also to get on the highway if, if they got to go uh, west. So it's definitely going to impact us. Gotcha. But yes. maybe you should, uh, yeah. I know that was issued, but maybe you should reissue that to the full, let's scan it to everybody, in the, including the planning board, okay. just to try to double tap it. And you think uh, Linda right. has this possibly? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do. I'll post it. Thank you. And just on uh, Larry's points, I do want to say that I, I did review the uh the stuff that you sent along i okay. obviously uh i carried the uh the noise ordinance as a councilman and i still am in support <laughs> of it and then uh also the um the rules and regulations i i think are were very well crafted yeah um, Larry. all right moving on <clears throat> public comment finally we have uh robert valentine as the first person to speak Good evening, everybody on the town board. 
Thank you for the uh, opportunity to speak. Um, the agenda states that the town board will abolish the 1.0 FTE account clerk position effective 4-19-24 for resolution. Um, that's a civil service position, I believe. Does this mean that a town employee at the town of Chester Town Hall will be losing their job? Yes. Okay. Was that town employee notified that they would be losing their job prior to this meeting? Yes. If this uh, goes through. Um, if so, who notified that town employee? We won't discuss that at this time. Okay. Um, so the employee was notified that their job would be terminated on the 19th, I believe it says here on the page. Yes. Prior to this meeting and prior to a vote of the board. So effectively that employee has been terminated prior to the vote and motion of the board from what I can compile from the information that I'm afforded here at the town board meeting. Mm -hmm. um, the employee affected by this, is that the employee that filed a grievance against Z uh, Clerk Zapala and a complaint against Councilman Courtney? We're not going to discuss okay. personnel matters. That, that'll suffice. Um, I'm sure that those complaints were for um, items that would pertain to um, her job here at Town Hall. Um, so I guess it would be safe to, to say that Supervisor Holdridge has fulfilled his campaign promise to the individuals, Robert Courtney and Linda Zapala, to retaliate against that town employee for her grievances. And let the record show that town supervisor fired an eight year civil service protected employee a single mom with three children at the wishes of his supporters. Um, it says here also that you will be creating a new position this evening and a resolution to hire Tanya McPhee, deputy controller position, effective 5-7. And then to reinstate for the purposes of vacation leave, longevity, and other benefit for service to the town of Chester. Um, I believe Ms. McPhee was a former employee of the town who resigned from her position and was paid out her vacation time, her sick time, and all of her other time in an effort to go on to a different job and provide perhaps a better living for herself and her family. Um, I just would like to know from this board why she's being um, benefited at the, at the, the, um, at the um, expense of the town taxpayers by reinstating all of her things. If you're, if you're removing positions to try to save money or whatever you're trying to accomplish, it looks here like you're just um, adding to something. Um, and it, it is also very suspicious that Miss McPhee is also uh, close friends, as far as we can see on social media, to Clerk Zapala and your consultant um, that does the um, consulting for your bookkeeping part time right now as uh, many pictures on social media show. So I guess we can just say that here in Chester, the good old boys club is back in back in full force. And I don't hold fault with Mr. Becker and Mr. Dysinger. I'm sure they're unaware of a lot of the events that may have transpired in the past as they were not on the board. But I do find fault with the three existing board members, the majority of the previous administration the majority and for you to fulfill this um, 
dirty deed, I feel, is um, is disappointing and disheartening. And I'm sure it will lead to further uh, actions or problems for the town of Chester and the residents. And maybe they'll have to pay at some point for your underhanded and uh, retaliatory practices. And that's all I have to say. Thank you so much. <clears throat> well, I won't respond to the majority of the uh, tinfoil hat conspiracies that were just stated, but what I will say is uh, the accounting department is going through a restructuring. Uh, last year, the previous supervisor engaged our auditors on assessing some of the town's internal controls based on the recommendations of our auditors and assessment of our new comptroller it became clear that the town needed to restructure the department and add additional controls. In addition, it was recommended to the town to move from a paper voucher system to a more updated requisition system since the town is already paying for that service within its accounting system. The board takes the recommendation and controls seriously uh, and there will be more changes moving forward. <clears throat> Thank you. Anything for a line for Oh, yes. Is there anything online about uh, public comment? I have one comment sure. from Nicole Griffin, but it's not a complete one, so I commented back. It says, is the ethics hearing that Tom Beck? And then I commented back, your comment looks incomplete. I received nothing further. And I also have no further public comments. I do want to say, for some reason, our YouTube is not working tonight, just so everyone knows. So do we have any idea why? I don't. I don't. In order for me to get in there right now, I would have to uh, exit out of what we currently have. Is this, are we able to upload it after the fact? We can definitely try to do that. Um, Chairman Sirota let me know that it wasn't working. Okay. I want to apologize to the public for that. We will have it up on YouTube and I will include that link as I usually do in the recap so people can watch it on YouTube. Um, I'm not sure there's much to respond to there, Tom. No. Okay. It was an incomplete thing. I'm not sure what she's getting at. Um, all right. Is there any other public comment at this time? Very good. We are moving on. <clears throat> Summary of bills. <clears throat> I just added up. Oh, here it is. The town will make a total payout in the amount of $248,944.73. Vouchers are located within the accounting uh, office if the board wishes to review, which we all should have had time to do so. Um, are there any questions or anything on the, uh, the abstract? No, no, no. Do I hear a motion? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Second. Roll call vote, please. Supervisor Holdridge? Aye. Council Member R. DeSanna? Aye. Council Member Becker? Aye. Council Member Courtney? Aye. Council Member Dyson? Aye. It is a unanimous vote. The abstract, the uh, summary bills is accepted. Thank you to the accounting department. Uh, Kiwanis cleanup has already been done. Resolution to accept the resignation of water laborer Connor McPhee. I'll read that real quick. Uh, Supervisor Holders and town board members, this letter is to inform you of my resignation from the position of water laborer with the town of Chester as I formally enlisted with the United States Army. At my last day will be Friday, April 26, 2024. I want to thank everyone for the opportunity of working with the town. Well, I want to make I want to thank Connor preemptively for his service to the country. Um, sorry to see him go. I know he. he gets uh, very high marks from everybody that I know to have worked with him in the town so far. Um, do I hear a motion to uh, accept the resignation? I'll make the motion. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 It's a unanimous vote. Effective uh, April 26th. <clears throat> The Chester Academy class of 2024 used clothing drive at Carpenter Field, which will also happen on April 20th uh, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. about the time of the uh, Little League uh, opener. Um, this is a fundraiser for their all night party, the senior all night party. Um, 
this is from Kristen, just real quick. The event is traditionally their biggest fundraiser. The company they use will drop off collection containers at approximately 9.45 a.m. near the basketball courts at Carpenter Field. Uh, people can drive up and deposit the items mentioned below. There will be a committee uh, representatives there all day to supervise. The company, excuse me, will then remove the containers and everything in them by 3.45 p.m. the same day. This is all scheduled during the Little League's opening day. <clears throat> uh yes uh do we have do i hear a motion to uh authorize this uh use clothing drive i'll make the motion is there a second i'll second um all those in favor aye aye, aye. aye. unanimous vote we will let kristen know that Approval of Alation Six Bar 100 LED lighting purchase for the Sugarloaf Performing Arts Center Pavilion Stage. Um, the lowest quote was $2,578, uh, coming out of the Performing Arts Center equipment budget. Um, so this was budgeted for, and this was um, previously stated at in the uh, report for the SPLAC. Um, this was uh, a, a deal that was happening that expired last uh friday so we got a consensus vote from the board preemptive of the meeting um this is a formal vote of that purchase um do i hear a motion i'll make the motion do i hear a second i'll second that. all those in favor aye aye aye, aye. aye. Yeah. resolution to approve a tree dedication and ceremony for jack deschler uh, for arbor day uh, to be planted and held at carpenter park at some point on April 26th, we haven't uh, decided a time yet and we're still looking into trees. The Desher family has generously offered to uh, pay for the tree and a associated plaque. Um, this is obviously to recognize uh, the long standing uh, community member, Jack Deschler and his service to the community in what I would imagine a high number of ways and uh, we're happy to do so, especially on Arbor Day, which we would also like to uh, recognize and do a tree planting for that. So um, do I hear a motion to authorize or approve the uh, tree dedication and ceremony for Jack Deschler? I'll make that motion. Second. <laughs> OK. <laughs> I think it's a unanimous uh, second by the board. Um, uh, roll call vote, please. Supervisor Holdridge. Aye. Council Member Ardisana. Aye. Council Member Becker. Aye. Council Member Courtney. Aye. Council Member Dysinger. Aye. So unanimous vote. Very good. Uh, resolution to end probationary period for John Hand. Um, and we are going to, so I'm going to explain this. Uh, we cannot promote him um, yet. He has to, He. so we're, we're going to be ending his probationary period as agreed. If all went well, um, this is the end of his eight weeks. Uh, now we need to wait another eight weeks in his capacity as a permanent uh, employee, no, meaning that he's not on probation, um, as the assistant building inspector three. After another eight weeks, which will be in June, I'm guessing, um, then we will have the opportunity to promote him as agreed upon. Um, so. At this time, um, I'd like to hear a motion to end the probationary period for John Hand and uh, increase his salary to $85,000 um, effective uh, April 8th, which would have been two days ago, um, as agreed upon in the terms of his offer letter. Uh, do I hear a motion? Motion. Is there a second? A second. Uh, roll call vote, please. Supervisor Holdridge. Aye. Council Member Ardisana. Aye. Council Member Becker. Aye. Council Member Courtney. Aye. Council Member Dysinger. Aye. Unanimous vote. Thank you. Um, we will, uh, I'd like to motion the Chester TV channel discussion. Um, still want some more information on that before we have a more in depth discussion. Do I hear a second to my motion? I'll second. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 That's a table. Yes. Resolution to authorize refund to Joe Schatz for $2,631.35. This is to correct, um, 
yet another improper building department charge from 2022 and 2023. Uh, he was, it is what it is. He was overcharged for something that he should not have been overcharged. I believe John Hand should explain this in an email that everybody had the opportunity to take a look at. Yeah, he yeah. Uh, basically got billed for square footage on areas in the house that were not living space where he should not have been. So that's where the excess cost came in. So that's, that's what's being refunded areas that are not living space. Right. So we're just trying to correct that and make sure he's not getting shafted on this. We're doing um, the right thing. Yes. <laughs> uh, so uh, I'd like to motion to authorize the refund for $2,631 and 35 cents to Joe Schatz. I'll second it. Uh, roll call vote, please. Supervisor Holdridge. Aye. Council Member Ardisana. Aye. Council Member Becker. Aye. Council Member Courtney. Aye. Council Member Dysinger. Aye. Unanimous vote. I'll let Joe know. Thank you all. Um, resolution to abolish the 1.0 FTE account clerk position effective uh, April 19th, 2024. Um, do I hear a motion? Motion. Is there a second? Second. Uh, roll call vote, please. Uh, Supervisor Holdridge. Aye. Council Member Ardisana. Aye. Council Member Becker. Aye. Council Member Courtney. I abstain. Council Member Dysinger. Aye. All right. Four zero one votes passes. Resolution to hire Tanya McPhee to the deputy comptroller position at seventy three thousand three hundred sixty four dollars effective May 7th, uh, 2024. Do I hear a motion? Motion on that. Is there a second? I'll second. Uh, roll call vote, please. Supervisor Holdridge. Aye. Council member Ardisana. Aye. Council member Becker. Aye. Council member Courtney. I abstain. And council member Dysinger. Aye. Passes 400. Resolution to recredit Tanya McPhee any previous time worked for the town of Chester uh, for the purposes of vacation leave, longevity, and any other benefit from service to the town of Chester. Just to be clear, she's not being paid out for vacation she's already received. This is right. This is for seniority purposes only. Right. If you just right. want to, can you just state that louder? This so is not, wait, wait you, I'm sorry, what you're giving her is the years of service. Correct. This is not That's for all. receiving vacation or um, sick time that right. she has already been paid out. Right. This is for seniority purpose purposes um, only given her short uh, departure from the town. Right. Thank you for clearing that up. Uh, is there a motion? Motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Uh, roll call vote, please. Supervisor Holdridge? Aye. Council Member Ardisana? Aye. Council Member Becker? Aye. Council Member Courtney? I abstain. And Council Member Dyson? Aye. Passes 401. Good. A resolution to promote Keith Meyer to Highway Department Foreman at $110,000, effective 4823. Um, in September. I'm sorry? 24. Oh, 24, sorry. <laughs> in September of 2023, uh, Keith Meyer has was made interim form, uh, foreman uh, for the highway department during Joe McGowan's absence. Joe McGowan is officially retired from the town effective April 6, 2024. I'd like to request a motion for the from the board to officially make Keith Meyer the foreman for the highway department as per the attached agreement from last year. Um, basically described, the agreements described what I just described to you. Um, John is requesting a motion to approve. Uh, John Riley, that is, is re requesting a motion to approve Keith Meyer to be the interim foreman, foreman during Joe's absence. Um, that will begin uh, this, September 25th, 2023, until April 2024, which is now. Um, at this time, we will we would like to have Keith be made the um, full-time highway, high, highway department foreman. Um, so just a formality. He already is the foreman, just interim. Joe McGowan is now departed from the town. Thank you for your service, Joe. Uh, are there, is there a motion on the floor? I'll make the motion. Is Second. There, all right. Uh, roll call vote, please. Supervisor Holdridge. Aye. Council member Ardisana. Aye. Council member Becker. Aye. Council member Courtney. Aye. Council member Dysinger. Aye. Uh, five 
zero vote, unanimous. Thank you all. Um, it's about that time of year again, the seasonal park <laughs> attendant. Um, we're, we're in need of one. We'd like to, the parks department and the buildings and grounds department would like us to post for one to see if we can get the proper help that we need uh, during this very busy year, time of year for them. Uh, so do I hear a motion to post for the seasonal park attendant at $15 an hour? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? A second. Uh, roll call vote, please. Supervisor Holdridge. Aye. Council Member Ardesana. Aye. Council Member Becker. Aye. Council Member Courtney. Aye. Council Member Dysinger. Aye. Unanimous vote. Very good. Resolution to post for the water laborer at $22.46 an hour. This is obviously to replace um, Connor, uh, Connor McVee. And this is the correct amount um, in terms of starting salary based on uh, the usual for the water department laborer. Uh, are there any motions on this uh, item? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? I'll second. All those in favor, I'm sorry. Uh, roll call vote, please. Council member, council, uh, excuse me, Supervisor Holder. Aye. Council member Ardesana. Aye. Council member Becker. Aye. Council member Courtney. Aye. Council member Dyson. Aye. Passes unanimously. Um, discussion on proposed standardization of towns, town meetings, rules and procedures. Um, said how exactly what it says, a discussion. Larry, if you want to kick us off, do you have anything to add on on this? Yeah, sure. I think uh, what this is really about is trying to come up with standardization uh, in the town, how we run our meetings. Um, so I think that that helps, um, you know, this rules what you have to do. You know, in our reorganization meeting, you know, we adopt Robert's rules of order. And we also, you know, stated that uh, the board meeting has to start off with a Pledge of Allegiance. Um, that sort of thing, you know, just uh, you now how the meetings are run, basically, you know, again, the whole point is standardization. You know, one of the things that we're looking to do um, is come up with processes and standards and that sort of thing, you know, how we do things in town. So this is just part of that. Very good. <clears throat> uh, would any, does any other board member have anything to add on this? Any questions for Larry on his draft? I think it's pretty I good think as it was, is. It was straightforward. I think. Yeah. Obviously, yeah, yeah. Like I said, this, this is a discussion. We'll have this circulated again um, with any edits. I'm going to take another look at it to make sure everything's in tip-top shape. Yep. Not that Larry wouldn't. Sure. Any comments would be appreciated. Yeah. Tony, Bob, no, no Tom. I think uh, us getting procedures in place for all our meetings is a great idea. Same as what we're doing, as Larry mentioned, with all our departments getting procedures in place to uh, benefit the town and the residents. Absolutely. Everybody will be on the same page and hold everybody accountable to what they're supposed to be doing during meetings and so on. So <laughs> please, everybody, just take another look at that for Larry to see if we can tidy it up if it needs it. Um, all right. Uh, discussion on the proposed noise ordinance. Um, this is pretty straightforward because I know I've been talking about it for three years and Larry has definitely talked about it for three years. Um, are there any questions and comments from the board? I know it's being reviewed by the attorney, I believe. Uh, anything? One of, the, one of the things in discussing with my, Dan brought to mind that, you know, I'm a very detailed guy and I broke it out, for example, by each zone that we have in town. Uh, I don't know, that may be confusing. We may want to consolidate that, say residential and this commercial industrial to make it simpler. Absolutely. That's something we, we may want to do. Unless your officers want to be driving around town with the zoning map in the car. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> I think that'd be a very yeah, good. Uh, yeah. Now, one confusing. other thing um, in my discussion with Dan, as I said, Dan raised some really good points. Is is uh, you now we put, we're establishing threshold, you know, DV, you know, DBA uh, you know, thresholds. In doing so, um, should we then follow up and get monitoring devices to be able to to measure that? My belief is I think we should. Oh yeah, um, it would have to be in order to enforce it. Now, Otherwise, the local keep, law wouldn't in, mean anything. In doing so. Uh, 
I believe we should have, you know, one monitor per, per active police car. And part of that also, this training, we're going to have to provide training to the police for that. Whoever uses the monitor will have to receive some training. We'll have to negotiate that in part of, of buying those monitors, as well as keeping them, I use the word certified, you know, that you know, validate that they're accurately reading. So that would have to be part of that. Uh, and in my research for monitors, I've seen anywhere from $85 up to 3000 uh, you know, but, uh, you know, I think depending on the cost, I mean, I don't know. And I, I'm sure the police department would like to have a word on this. Um, I don't know. Is, is it necessary to have literally every car out on patrol have one, or do we just need like two for the, for well, the whole department? The, the problem is if someone calls in uh, a complaint and that officer doesn't you know that's nearby, doesn't have a monitor. Yes. Go all the way back to the police station to get it. And then go back. That's a, that's a lot of, time that could be wasted i, I think, think we could probably get monitors for around six hundred dollars around that that price range so we may need you know let's say eight or ten of them um we, we can decide on that you but know i think we we should look at the, the prospect of how many people are out on patrol you go know, right you know for the most part i think you're going to have three people out on patrol at most times and if there is a call if only one of those units have it most of the time when there's a call, multiple police officers will go to that call yeah, also. That's, so yeah. that's to be discussed with Dan yeah. also on how many units we might need. Does right. the chief the have any cost. have any input at this time or would he like to review more? I mean, I think it's, if it comes down to a financial decision, obviously yeah. one in each patrol car is the easiest way to go. But is that financially feasible? You know, I don't know. If it's, you know, like... Councilman Becker said there's you know three for the, the cars that are on patrol at any given time. Um, it's going to depend on how I think it's going to be important to look at how the monitor is stored, what kind of case it's in, because now it's going to be consistently getting transferred three times a day from car to car, um, as opposed to just being stored in a trunk and taken out when it's needed. So I, I think that should be taken into consideration as well. Right now, uh, I would say that. We could today. We're not enforcing it by using a monitor, right? Okay, <clears throat> so we could implement this change without the monitors because I don't see how we have the money for it this year. So it would have to be an expenditure, let's say, possibly in twenty-five. You know, so it's not going to. It wouldn't. Those wouldn't be available right away. Mm -hmm. and that could, but that us shouldn't us. preclude us from making you know the necessary changes. Exactly. I agree. And that'll also give us an opportunity to see with the reduced numbers, if we see more, you know, if there's going to be more complaints, if there's an issue with compliance, if there's an issue with actually uh, you know, enforcing the enforcing the rule. Right. That might make a big determination on how many units we actually purchase in the future. And, you know, I've, I have voiced my opinion against it in some ways. I agree with some of it. I disagree with others. But I think there also has to be a, a, a teaching curve to the residents. Mm -hmm. yeah. yep. you, go change, you go change a number, if that's what happens. And then all of a sudden, you know, where they were might have been compliant. Not, not that, you know, I have wild parties and I'm at 65 decibels or at 85. And then I'm, I'm going to, you know, I don't, I'm not looking at any of that. But I think it has to be an education piece first before we just start. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That's, that's true. Yeah. And, and Chief's here. He can, he can correct me if I'm wrong. Most noise complaints, an officer will show up and say, hey, we got a noise complaint. Could you knock it down? It's not the initial noise complaint. Usually there's a warning issue of, of, of some ill. Right. And, right. and hey, we got a complaint. Tone it down. And then when folks fail to tone it down and then the officers leave and then they crank the radio right back up, that's when we start looking into um, right. into the violations. And again, just to, back, just to piggyback on what I said, I mean, year one, we had 71 complaints. Year two was, I think, 50. So people are understanding there's now an ordinance. So it's working, you know, I mean, but I don't want to get into re-debating the numbers. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> all right. Any any other discussion at this time? No, while there's still... Question? Sure. Um, I actually have a question and statement. The question is, are outdoor speakers allowed? So... Like in the code, um, no, uh, if it's unreasonable and it doesn't conform to the current 
noise ordinance that would obviously I mean there's no change there's no there's no proposed change um, from uh, Councilman Dysinger and I uh, that would affect that in fact it would probably bring down the level of unreasonableness if okay, it's not my second statement was um, if you have it's not it seems like the noise ordinance just addresses decibels but you can have someone who plays music at a lower rate, but you still hear it at your under depth when you're trying to enjoy mm -hmm. the depth, but it just goes on and on and on. There are a series of uh, there are a series of standards um, with unreasonableness. Decibel is the easy one because it's the most objective versus subjective. There are a series of subjective standards, um, repetitive, um, various various standards like that. So you could have a quiet thing that is just. Um, annoying. Uh, annoying. That is in the. That is in. That is in the code. Is. Yeah. Yeah. So, for example, um, somebody has an alarm clock, not very loud, but it's been going off for six hours, and you can, you know, you can hear it for six. You know, that's That'd not. Be reasonable. That would be. That would be something that might be. For a dog that barks, right. Not yeah. Loud, but just a, a dog that is constantly barking. Yes. Yes. That. So it's not just decibels. It's also. Yep. Right. Yeah. Right. I posted about the code earlier this week. I suggest everybody go and read the code if you know they want the actual detailing. It's not a very long section. It's all spelled out there, and we will be making, I believe, improvements to it so uh, within yeah, the, the next month. The noise so. ordinance is up on the town website. Yeah, so. I, no, I read it, but it just yeah. seems there's areas that are a little bit vague, and, if, and I didn't understand. If you, I appreciate the noise. <laughs> If you or anybody else has specific suggestions that aren't already in the code, please email us so we can take that into account before right. we introduce a local law. Um, or we're going to have a public hearing. Yes. Well, okay. yeah, so oh, I think we'd have a public hearing. So yes, we'll, we'll, we'll have a public hearing. And um, but if you want if you want that in the introduction, introductory local law before even the public hearing. So it's presented in that public hearing. Um, email us ahead of time. No problem. Ask a sure. I haven't really looked at. You're, so you're getting so yours are yours. Yours would be exempt. I, and I spelled this out as well um, because it's a town approved uh, event. Event. And, and those are already ex exempt. That's in there. And, and we are not we're looking. Very, you know, conscious of shutting down. I know. <laughs> yeah, your town approved events are exempt. This isn't attacking any uh, uh, interests like that. All right, thank you. Yep. So the next this next step is um, we'll circulate. Um, we have um, Councilman Dysinger's uh, draft. We'll finalize the draft. We'll introduce that local law as a local law, and then we can solicit public comments through a public comment. Okay. Right. Okay, but any comments that the board members have, if, if, yeah, please give me so I can uh, I'll update them and redistribute. Draft, yes. yeah. Any other discussion at this time? I think I just have one question for Liz. I think uh, will we be able to uh, make changes to our procurement policy at our next meeting, possibly, or the following uh, meeting after that? Just Mr. Myers, not a, is not. A, he, he knew that a, question was coming. <laughs> he knew that question he was coming. Away. The, the, the procurement policy, along with many other things like the Performing Arts Center tier system that we've been talking about, all okay. these things are in the work. Okay. We have inundated Liz with plenty of work. No problem. Um, it is, it is and, on my, and Neil. It, uh, is on my, it is on my to-do list. Yes. Um, okay. These things are not forgotten, and I annoy Liz about them constantly. So, no, just a question. <laughs> uh, uh, just to give you, actually, I'll make sure it's on my official to-do list, but it's on my, it's on my list. Um, I will give you the current uh, to-do list that I have and, and a quick status update since, since you asked. Um, the zombie pool local law, I have a, a draft I anticipate circulating internally to the board um, within the next day or so, so that you can review and get me any comments before introduction. Um, we, with respect to the wards uh, system, uh, Clerks of Pollock was able to get um, the local law filed, so we are officially filed. Um, so we, I will have for you at the next meeting um, a memo of your next steps, which is the adoption of the maps, and then whether we wish to consider a ballot proposition for uh, four-year terms and and or for both staggering of those terms. 
I will also have, as requested, um, a draft, again, circulated in the next couple of days, uh, the 485B opt-out um, local law procurement policy is on my list. Um, I have ethics local law on my list, um, as well as a couple of other minor minor matters, um, and that does not include the code enforcement stuff. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Very good. Um, thank you for your help. Yep, we are keeping her busy. <clears throat> All right. Anything else on the uh, noise ordinance? All right. Before I move to education requests, uh, I did forget to read a statement about the uh, Arbor Day thing. Uh, our, and this is from this is a collaboration statement from the uh, from the um, Conservation Advisory Council. Arbor Day, much like Earth Day, is an annual holiday that celebrates nature, but specifically the importance of trees encourages the planting, upkeep, and preservation of trees. The town's Conservation Advisory Council is presenting an Arbor Day planting ceremony as a joint event with the town um, and possibly the village and fire district in hopes to inspire others to plant and care for trees on their own properties. This year's Arbor Day tree planting uh, will be done in memory of a longtime resident, public servant, and community volunteer, Jack Deschler, who recently passed away. The uh, Conservation Advisory Council will take nominations for future memorial plantings. Uh, they will also be researching local locations with the town's park department uh, for additional tree and shrub planting projects in town this year. Uh, we welcome input and volunteers. All right. Yes. All right. But with that being said, there is a, uh, just from what I see, one training request two training requests yes uh, i would like to send sergeant dugan and sergeant chambers to the 2024 empire state law enforcement traffic safety conference the conference will be held in bolton landing new york on april 24th and 25th of 2024 there is no fee for the conference but two nights of hotel stay will will be required at the conference rate of 119 dollars per night uh, the Eslitz Conference is a two-day co event that attracts police officers from around the state to share ideas aimed at improving traffic safety. The planning committee for an annual conference includes representatives from the New York State Police and Governor's Traffic Safety Committee, New York State Sheriff's Association, and New York State Association of Chiefs of Police. And then the other request, I would like to send, send Sergeant Vitale to a motorcycle safety and enforcement training program. So the goal of the training is to introduce law enforcement to the national and state specific motorcycle enforcement issues in an event, in an effort to reduce the number of deaths and injuries from motorcycles related crashes. The training program is supported by the governor's traffic safety committee. The course will be held in Goshen on April 30th, 2024. There is no fee for this course. Do I hear a motion to approve these training requests? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? A second. Um, roll call vote, please. Supervisor Holdred. Aye. Council Member Ardesana. Aye. Council Member Becker. Aye. Council Member Courtney. Aye. Council Member Dysinger. Aye. Unanimous vote. They are um, approved. There are no other education requests. <clears throat> that is all. Um, before new business, um, I believe there was something else. That a, a council member had to bring up. Yeah, I would like to go in executive session Real for quick. the purpose of an eth uh, we had ethics uh, interviews. We want to talk about the, the interview that we had. Okay. All right. Is there a second to the councilman's motion? Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 And I will say out. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. I was supposed to abstain for that. And there will be new business afterwards, I believe. When you do it, we'll just see the cutouts the village and fire district. I don't know if they're yeah. How are they getting by inspection? Crazy. Michelle, do you, do you know if anybody reached out to the village about this yet? The your, the uh, tree plant.
Who knew? I, I can't finish the ceremony. I'm, I'm, um, I know I'll, I'll be there Saturday. Everybody should be there if they can. Uh, I can't, unfortunately. I'll be there. The last time I was there, you guys had pretty good food. <laughs> it's all about the food. Yeah. I know. It was, it was that's Saturday. Not this Saturday. Right? Want me to make Before a motion? I make that clarification. That, that's this Saturday okay. again? Yes. This Saturday, what time? 10 a.m. 10 a.m. At the plaque. That was yep. the plaque. I can't make it. Get something. All right. Michelle, let me know when you're ready. Right. All right. Is there a motion to come out of executive session? Motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Passes four zero one. We are out of executive session. Is there? Are right, I have new business? But I'm, is there a new business from what just happened in the executive session? Yes, Larry. Did you want to? Yes. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to appoint um, Matt Woods to the ethics board. And which uh, seat will he be filling? Unaffiliated. The independent unaffiliated seat? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second it. Um, roll call vote, please. Supervisor Holdridge. Abstain. Council Member Artisana. Aye. Council Member Becker. Aye. Council Member Courtney. Aye. Council Member Dysinger. Aye. The vote passes 4 0 1. Matt Woods is appointed to the ethics board. And I just want to say um, I abstain because I know Matt Woods personally. Um, his dog and my dog are best friends. So uh, I did not take place in the interview process, and I did not vote on this. And just to be clear, is it's filling a vacancy or is this a home term? This is filling a – is it, it's filling a vacancy. Vacancy. No, no, no. It is a new – isn't it a new? I just want to be clear as to the yeah, so Tim Diltz. Yeah, Tim Diltz. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, he ran out. So, yeah. Yeah. So it's a, his term it's expired. Two year term. Okay, two year just term. for the record, to be clear. Got it. Um, just in addition, there was some some clarification um, that we discussed in executive session. Um, your board of ethics is comprised of five resident electors. Um, you can uh, you have a restriction that no more than two members shall be of the same political party. Um, but you could have a board of five unaffiliated. So uh, at our meeting earlier, we announced that there was a spot for a uh, Democratic candidate. Certainly a, a Democrat could apply, but also it, doesn't have to be. it does not have to be. It could be somebody who works in families, well, conservative good, party. So just I, I want to be clear that that seat's open. It is not open to someone because there are a few sitting Republicans on the committee already. That you could not be a Republican for that reason. So I just want to be clear for the record that if there's other unaffiliated interested or somebody of a different party, um, they're welcome to apply. Very good. We are still looking to fill another seat that can be either an independent, an unaffiliated, or a Democrat. So please apply so we can have a poll at this board. Thank you, Liz. Um, other new business, um, the award system. Uh, that is officially filed with the state. So now we can move forward with voting on maps and then pushing for a permissive referendum. Uh, yeah, I have to get you the full procedure on that. Yeah, um, we will that's be, a two-step two process. We will be figuring out and presenting the process for um, outlining the local law on four-year terms and staggered terms for uh, the uh, four council members, um, but we are able and willing to vote on mass officially, which I would like to do at the next meeting. I think it's been discussed at nauseum. Everybody's been uh, presented the maps at nauseum. I will have them up again at the next meeting, just so everybody can be clear on what we're voting on. Um, so I urge the council to look back at my emails. I'll probably email you all again um, the maps and. You can um, contemplate to yourselves what you think is best out of those two options that were presented right. to us from the uh, from the planning department at the county. But I will have that on the agenda at the next meeting. Okay. Yeah, pretty good. And then the last thing for new business from me uh, is ARPA funding. Um, I would like to designate ARPA funds for two previous uh, purchases, uh, one 2023 Chevy dump truck, uh, which was $55,000 um, for the 
uh, the water department, and one 2024 Ford F-350 diesel pickup with a plow, um, basically the performance truck uh, from the highway department at $71,331.38. You were not seeing me down this, I will send this. No, but I didn't realize it was for the water department. Yes. The first one, the 2023, is the second one is a highway department. Totaling $126,331.38. Um, this is for ARPA funds, which as of a report to me last week, we have around $400,000-ish in ARPA. Um, we have to earmark by the end of this year. Um, and I did discuss this with, I believe, all or most of the board members. This is a one-time purchase, so it fits and it both uh, items serve uh, the full town. Uh, so I think this is the perfect uh, use of our ARPA funding. And we definitely want to make use of the ARPA funding before the end of the year. Otherwise, we lose out on the money. So with that being said, I would like to, well, is there any discussion before I make a motion on this? No. No? No, it makes okay. sense. Um, then I would like to motion to uh, earmark these two purchases totaling $126,331.38 uh, for ARPA funding usage. Is there a second to my motion? I'll second. Uh, roll call vote, please. Supervisor Haldridge. Aye. Council Member Ardisana. Aye. Council Member Becker. Aye. Council Member Courtney. Aye. Council Member Dysinger. Aye. Unanimous vote, 5 0. Thank you. Very good usage of the fund. All right. That being said, is there any other new business at this time? Nope. Uh, public comment. Richard, I believe you had a comment? Yeah, I do. Uh, this is in reference to the tree dedications that you have. I'm not sure exactly what your plans are, um, but do they include previous dedications? Or just ones from now forward. You mean um, like other dedications that the town has made to? Members well, that have been made to the town. Um, most of the reasons I say that used to be a plaque hanging here that was donated by the community foundation on trees that were planted 30 years ago. Really? Uh, and those, I mean, if we're going to keep track of this, why, why shouldn't we keep track of ones that are historic? Uh, I'll have to look around for that. I think it's, it's probably, a good idea. It's probably yeah. And the other, the other is at the theater. I don't know if this fits the category. Uh, three of the trees on the front on the front lawn were dedicated from uh, the Warwick uh, PTA from uh, King School for things the theater did. Uh, another tree is dedicated actually to me uh, for something that I did. Uh, do these fit into that case? Uh, so I just uh, just want to bring that to your attention because again. There were dedications, and two of the trees are on my property. One, one I've unfortunately had to replace, uh, but it's now a mature tree. What do you again. mean? Does this apply to that? Because we're not doing anything that has anything to do with previous planting. Well, I'm just. Uh, do you um, mean like? We well, are you are you keeping a register of keeping, keeping a record? Yeah. Okay. A record of. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, uh, because I said that was a record. Yeah, that was yeah. there. Uh, maybe that shouldn't be rehung, but maybe we should have an ongoing record of some sort so we know where the, the trees are and okay. what they were done and who they were uh, contributed to. We'll Great. take a look at that and we'll make sure that we start to keep the record again. All right. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Are there any other public yes. comments? Michelle? I have a Helen Flavin. In New York City, there are usually one to two town meters per precinct. Wouldn't need one for each patrol car, two would be more than sufficient. Thank That's you, it. Helen. That will be taken into consideration. Is there anything else, Michelle? That's all I have. Anything else from the board? I make no. a motion no. to close the meeting. Is there a <laughs> is there a second to that motion? I'll second. second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 The meeting is adjourned.